Juice to you. Now the phase two projects, the three projects to automate your recruitment lead and candidate flow. Now, the reasons why we have a problem with this recruitment lead and candidate flow, the reasons why we have this, and the reasons why you cannot grow without exchanging essentially your time for money and the stress that comes with it, is first of all, the manual processes you use to get clients and candidates, so job boards, it's the phone, it's email, it's LinkedIn, doing the same as everyone else. Number two, you don't nurture the relationship. So most of your clients will not be hiring right now, but they probably will be in the next 12 months. But you don't want to find out when they're on the job boards, you want to find out obviously before. Your candidates, we need to nurture them for the same principle. They may or, not, may not, may or may not be looking now. So with those clients and candidates, if we don't nurture them, you're going to be essentially treating them poorly. So we want to automate that nurturing. And the third problem is this, we treat all prospects the same, which means there's a split between your clients, your candidates. So again, the client may be hiring now or it may be hiring in nine months, but you don't know. So how do you actually filter that out? You can't do it manually. You need to have a process and a system for this. So project four, the outcome we're looking to achieve in your recruitment search business is the following. We want to install a client and candidate campaign automation. So what that means is the following. Automation is a, it's become, excuse my French, but to give you the, uh, the visual, it's become a bastardized term now in recruitment. Everyone's using that as a hot, hot topic. But really automation should give us a very direct outcome. There's really two key principles and two types of automation you want to understand that you need in your business. One is campaign automation. So that is Andy, I need clients right now. I need candidates right now. So I've got this outstanding candidate. I need to get a client. So I might use an MPC strategy, most placeable candidate. Or more likely, I've got this outstanding role and I need the candidate. So we need the candidate right now. So let's say that there are 200 candidates in your market who fit the exact requirements for that client role. What do you do right now? Do you go on LinkedIn? Do you pick up the phone? Do you get go through your notes? Do you um, send out sporadic emails? Send out a newsletter? Would it be of use to you if you had all 200 or at least 90% of that 200 inside your database, inside your CRM, then you could then take that 200, put them into an automated tool, and you have seven templates in that tool. The first message is actually selling the role. So we call that the most sellable role. So we've got a template for that. Then the follow-ups, messages two, three, four, five, six, seven, are the automated follow-ups. So if they open the email and don't respond, they get a certain follow-up. If they don't open the email, they get another certain follow-up. But these are uploaded and the same sequence is used again and again. The role clearly changes each time. So when you've got this ability to literally take your candidates, upload them into this automated tool, use this seven step sequence with the proven, the proven templates, it becomes very easy to get the candidates in your inbox pretty much same day. And the response rate that we're looking at is around about currently 50 to 94% which is pretty good. So it could be that you need to take the segmentation of that 200 down to just say the top 50 if you've segmented them properly. But do you see the power of automation and the follow-up happens automatically. So when you've got the data set that we did in project one, so if we come back up, project one was about attracting the clients and candidates. Now remember what we did. Remember what we did. We've built these data sets, this CRM full of candidates that can be done in a matter of weeks. We've got this in place. So whether it be the, the database full of candidates or the database full of clients. With this, we've got complete power. And with this second project, or the second phase rather, about automating now and bringing this lead flow in, this candidate flow. With project four, with project four, we're installing the client and candidate campaign automation, which is I need candidates now, I need clients now. Now the next project in this phase is you need to nurture the clients and candidates while we sleep. 
So as we said before, it could be in your market, 10, 20% of your clients are hiring right now. It might be less, it might be more. Do you know? Or do you know when they're about to hire? Same with your candidates. Which candidates are open to moving right now? We probably don't want the candidates on the job boards. We probably don't want the candidates who are actively looking because they're not going to be typically the best standard of candidate. So we want the passive candidate. So we need to continually nurture them. And that happens in the background again. So that could be an email sequence set up for the next 365 days. So with this nurturing, again, that's automated. And once it's set up, that's it done in your business for both clients and for candidates. And within that nurturing sequence, there's also campaign templates. So not just adding value, there's actually four key drivers I haven't got time to go into now. We don't only add value, we actually put in campaign templates in there too. But it's all automated. So we campaign automation, Andy, I need clients right now, I need candidates right now. Nurturing is all of the, the love we give them in the background that normally you might do by taking them out for lunch, checking in, etc. That's all automated. And project six is we install one to many strategies on the likes of LinkedIn. It might be Zing. So this process again is around scaling your platforms. So it's typical for a, a member when they join us to take their LinkedIn network as an example from let's say they join us with about a thousand targeted in their network, taking that to around 12, 14,000 in the first 12 months. Now let's say in their business, when they come and they identify, right, there's, um, there's 7,000 potential clients in my niche and there are 30,000 candidates in my niche. Would it be prudent that they would have a profile for them that might be the client profile? Would it be prudent that their partner, spouse, staff member has a profile for the candidates? So at end of year one, well in fact six months in, we've got pretty much all the clients in our platform. End of year one, we've got 50, 60, 70% of all the candidates in our platform, as well as having 90, 95% of them inside our CRM already. So we've got these two different ways of running campaign automation. And we've also got these two ways of running nurturing automation. So let's dig a little bit deeper on this.